And we begin with breaking news here at 5 o'clock. The FBI made a major announcement just a half an hour ago on election security. It says it has evidence Iran and Russia are attempting to interfere in the election by manipulating public opinion. That includes emails from Iran meant to intimidate Florida voters. We have confirmed that some voter registration information has been obtained by Iran and separately by Russia. This data can be used by foreign actors to attempt to communicate false information to registered voters that they hope will cause confusion, sow chaos, and undermine your confidence in American democracy. Iran is distributing other content to include a video that implies that individuals could cast fraudulent ballots, even from overseas. This video and any claims about such allegedly fraud, fraudulent ballots are not true. These actions are desperate attempts by desperate adversaries. As we mentioned, this was just announced. You can find more information and analysis on this throughout the evening on air and on KGW.com. But they just simply want the same opportunity that the other public school has in their same county, and that's what we're here trying to help them with. A private Christian school in eastern Oregon has filed a lawsuit against the state of Oregon for not allowing it to offer in-person learning. The Hermiston Christian School's lawyer says the school should be able to do it, especially since another district in the same county is offering in-person learning. Christine Pitawanich explains. Hermiston Christian School in Umatilla County filed this lawsuit. It alleges the state of Oregon isn't treating private religious schools the same as public schools when it comes to allowing in-person learning. I spoke with Kimberly Trott over the phone. She's a mom who has three kids that are enrolled at the school. She says right now, her kids do get a couple hours of in-person instruction and they're allowed to go to the building for daycare for the majority of the day. It doesn't make sense to me that these kids can go to well, go to daycare all day, but they can't learn all day or the school will be fine. Ryan Tucker, the lawyer representing the school, is with Alliance Defending Freedom. It's the nation's largest Christian legal nonprofit. In this same county, uh, Ukiah School District is open. Uh, they have 75 kids or less. Uh, so it makes no sense as to why this public school in the same county is open, but just because they're a religious private school, they're closed. We reached out to both the Oregon Department of Education and the governor's office. ODE responded, saying it doesn't comment on pending legal matters, but said health metrics for reopening schools are the same for both private and public schools. While ODE did not give us an exact reason, we wanted to dig into the metrics for a possible explanation. The Ukiah School is able to open under the exception related to small school districts, and there is a requirement involving community spread. Take a look at this map posted on the Umatilla County Public Health website. It shows coronavirus cases. The deep red area where Hermiston is located has between 1,001 to 2,000 COVID-19 cases, while Ukiah, about an hour and a half drive away in the white shaded area, has zero to four cases. Trot says COVID-19 is definitely a concern, but each family situation is also different. I think it should be at the parent's discretion. If you are concerned about your children, then they should keep them home. The lawsuit aims not only to open Hermiston Christian School to in-person learning, but to also stop enforcement of a possible $1,250 fine or 30 days in jail if a school were to open its doors back up to in-person learning. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. In Lake Oswego, the school board passed a resolution Monday night calling on Governor Kate Brown to make it easier for districts to open their classrooms to students. The district has 7,000 students. Only about 20 with special needs are getting in-person instruction. The superintendent said the governor should follow the lead of states like Washington. I want to just be clear that we are not looking to buck the science. We are definitely respectful of the science. We're also, um, the school board has advocated for the governor and the decision makers to look at other states who have some safe reopening 
uh, spans of metrics, for instance, or exemptions or waivers. Washington State posted new guidelines late last week. They put local health authorities and school districts in charge of when they can reopen to in-person teaching. Some of the metrics are more relaxed than Oregon's. Here's a look at the latest numbers now. Oregon reported 331 new cases along with two more deaths. The state has more than 40,000 total cases. The dotted line represents the two week average for daily cases. It has been spiking lately, although if you look there at the very end, the line is starting to level off a little bit now. An Oregon company's thermal imaging technology is being used to protect the health of local seniors during the COVID-19 pandemic. Galen Etlin shows us how it works. Robert Thomas worked as a physics researcher and a professor for decades. A retired person of age 82. He now lives at Willamette View Retirement Community in Milwaukee and keeps sharp. By practicing Mandarin. It's very nice to meet you. But also learning about the technology at his front door. We have to be on the alert. Staff and seniors living here pass by these infrared cameras every day as part of the screening for coronavirus. It gives you either a green check mark or a red screen. Craig Van Valkenburg is CEO of Willamette View. When he heard this tech came from a local company, he knew it could be a valuable tool. It's the technology they use at the Pentagon, they use in major manufacturing, they're deploying in airports, and so we thought, well, if it works for them, it should work for us. It's not the silver bullet, it's not a medical device. Ezra Merrill is vice president of FLIR Systems Incorporated, based in Wilsonville. He says his team's thermo cameras are simply another line of defense for this vulnerable population at Willamette View. It's really part of a full integrated system. Questionnaires, it's temperature screening, it's access control. What they've done is really a model. FLIR's technology is used all over the world, from cameras in self-driving cars to the infrared camera used to spot the Boston bomber from a helicopter. Now, though, it's helping keep people who may be sick at a distance. Cameras scan faces and check the corners of your eyes for elevated temperatures. People who run hot get pulled aside for another check. It is a good indicator if you're looking at a population to be able to tell if one person is warmer than the others. What purpose would you say it serves in terms of public health, peace of mind? How do you feel about it? All of the above. It's used in a very simple and quick quick way. Robert and his neighbors keeping a cool head through COVID-19. I'm Galen Etlin for KGW News. Hey, we have some good news for those still waiting on their $300 lost wages assistance benefits. The state says less than 5% of those eligible haven't been paid yet, and most should receive those payments within the next week. Implementing each new program gets more complicated as it's had to interact with more and more of the new programs we've implemented over the past several months. Another benefit unemployed Oregonians are waiting on is the waiting week benefits. The department says those payments should be made in late November. Some bowling alley operators in the Portland metro area are pushing for the state to allow them to reopen. Unlike some other businesses, health officials have said bowling alleys aren't safe to open yet under current guidelines. Clackamas, Multnomah and Washington are three of just four counties in Oregon still in phase one. That means gyms and arcades can reopen, but bowling alleys can't. Mark and Lori Pearl, who own Tiger Bowl, say it doesn't feel fair. I just need them to know there's bowling people in this these tri-county area that are struggling hard. I mean, this is our livelihood. It's our life. Our hope is to get a, a maybe a phase 1.5 if you can't get us to two. The Pearls say when they're allowed to reopen, they'll be ready based on the health standards that open bowling alleys are following. They're also planning a rally tomorrow at 5 p.m. in front of Tiger Bowl. They're asking supporters to bring signs to help them raise awareness in hopes of saving their business.